um, uh, Mark. I think they, the doc looked at her and uh, uh, gave her a dosage of the antibodies, frankly, with the, the objective of keeping her out of the hospital and that did work. Yeah. But, you know, kind of scary if you see people have it. I mean, very volatile pull socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we have everyone chair. Sure. Okay, all right, super. Okay. I think you're on mute, uh, Commissioner Kalbach. No, I didn't get a notice about tonight or anything. I get the notice for February. Oh, the February was just an update to include Jim with his uh, community center presentation. Yeah, but I didn't get anything about tonight. Art just texted me, so. Oh, uh, are you not subscribed to the Financial Commission page uh, agenda? I don't have an agenda or anything. I just, yeah. I just responding to Art's graceful, <laughs> yeah. uh, are you going to join us or not? So, yeah. uh, and, and I actually didn't have uh, in my calendar issue. I did not have the Ring Central information. I had to go back to the December twentieth to to add it. So I'll I'll go look at it uh, later. Yeah. Do we have Do you have an agenda? Do we? What are we working from? Um, I'll forward it to you, Gary. Just now. Okay. Thank you, LG. No problem. Anybody else needs it? Yep, I got it. I got it. Okay. It should be in your mailbox now, Gary. I'm going to I'm going to share my screen for the agenda so we can see this is going to be the agenda for today. Uh, yeah. But before that, uh, I'm going to stop sharing for a second and uh, let's establish quorum. Yeah. Uh, Chair Kalka. Here. Vice Chair McClatchy. Here. Commissioners Claris. on mute. Commissioner Claris? You're on mute, John. <laughs> Forgive me. Here. Uh, Commissioner Fry? Uh, here. Commissioner Kalbach? Here. Commissioner Richmond? Here. Commissioner Whipple? Here. The record shows all members present. The chair, you want to lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Sure, yes. All right, let's get started. I pledge allegiance to the flag I of pledge the allegiance. United States to the of America and to the Republic, Republic, Republic which is which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God, God indivisible, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for all. We move to uh, public comment on items not on the agenda. Uh, do we have any members of the public who would like to comment? I, I'm just a visitor. I have an interest in the, my name is Jim Connor. I have an interest in the commission next year and if the seats become available. Background of finance, I can discuss that, but I want to observe a meeting. Welcome. Great. Okay, Welcome. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, no, I think. Uh, I don't see any hands raised either. So we can move to the agenda. Uh, the first item is a draft uh, minutes for the December 20th meeting. Any corrections, changes? Do you guys need a minute to look it over? It's fairly short. I mean, we just basically. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was okay, Kuljeet, but others may not have had a chance I, to look at it yet. I, I, I looked at it, no issues. I'm, I'm looking at it, it looks fine. Okay, a motion to pass. Motion moved, approval. Seconded by. Second. The second was from Whipple? Yes. Okay. For approval. Take, take a vote. Uh, Chair Hawker? Yes. Vice Chair McClashy? Yes. Commissioner Claris? Yes. Fry? Yeah, he's, Mr. He's, he's oh, no. Mark your mute. You're muted. Sorry, I'm muted. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Kalbach? Yes. Commissioner Richmond? Yes. And Commissioner Whipple? Yes. That motion passes seven to nothing. Uh, 
The next item that we have is the election of the chair and vice chair. And this will be for the term ending October, 7, October 17, 2022. Uh, because we, we were supposed to have had this in October, but I had just joined, so I wasn't aware. Uh, you, you could elect a new chair or reaffirm the current chairs, uh, and I'm going to open it up for nominations. So, Kuljade, are you interested in continuing in your role? I, I know, I mean, like I said, I mean, it's not a, like a big burden or anything. It's, we're not a very contentious group or anything. I don't mind, but if anybody else would like to do that, I don't mind that either. So, anyway. I'd like to ask Martha if she's interested in this. Kind of, we talked about it a year or two ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, thanks, Gary. And I am very happy to serve with all of you, and I'm very happy to serve with Kelji. So, Kelji, if you're interested in continuing, um, I am perfectly fine being vice chair and backing you up, however I can. And I have done very little to date as vice chair, but willing to serve as vice chair again. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. I appreciate it. Um, I, I would move uh, election of Kuljit as chair and Martha as vice chair. And I will second that. Great. So we'll just take a vote at that. Uh, Commissioners Claris. Approve. Uh, Commissioner Fry. Uh, approved. Commissioner Kelbach? Yes. Commissioner Richmond? Yes. Commissioner Whipple? Yes. Chair Colcott? Yes. Vice Chair McClatchy? Yes. So that would pass a 7 to 0 as well. Uh, moving on uh, to the next item on the agenda, we've got our investment policy review and I'm going to share my screen for this one. I, I don't have a presentation, but I'm just going to share what, what we have changed in the current policy. So, okay. so just, uh, just to remind people, I think, I mean, we discussed this before. There's a, just a technical change in the negative interest and uh, um, there's one more change. I can't remember off the top of my head, sorry. Right, those, those are the main things, right? Correct. So in, okay. in uh, the August, I believe it was the August meeting of the commission, uh, there was a presentation made by PFM, by Monique's, uh, Monique, and uh, they had made some recommendations to change some of the items on the policy with relations to SB 998, 998. And primarily there were four changes that were made. Uh, we are implementing just one of those changes, which is the negative market interest rate. Uh, we don't expect it to come to that stage, but uh, we're just having it there for this time. Yeah, we, we did have a discussion about it. So if you want, we guys can have another you know summary of this, uh, but it seemed like this was just more of a administrative thing to do uh, yeah. because it's- yeah. I, I guess- all over Maybe. some of these indices or, or treasuries, et cetera, we invest in sometimes are now open to negative interest. So, I guess I'm interested in, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to adding it as an option, but can you imagine circumstances over which you, when you would actually do that? The only circumstances that we already invested in, in like a, we have a treasury or, or some, some as security that goes negative. Okay. As opposed to us voluntarily seeking out a negative. I'm fine with that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so I think Art, it's also there. We said somebody's got to go to the city manager before you do it, and I think, frankly, this has lagged so long that in this interest rate cycle, we're at zero risk of this yeah. happening at this point. So, yeah, yep. um, this to me is just kind of a pedantic step, and I think our view was as long as somebody has to go to an adult before they do it, um, <laughs> if it's available for flexibility and if you had to do it, you would not have to go to the city council to amend the policy. That seemed okay to us, but you know, we're, we're gonna have four increases this year. It's not gonna be a problem. <laughs> right, and, and this is gonna be only up to 2026, I believe. It's, it's right. a temporary state law. So uh, I don't see any risks as uh, Commissioner Richmond said, uh, interest rates are looking up looking like they're going to go up significantly this year. So uh, 
it's just a mechanism to to be in line with the state law. Okay. Do we need a motion on this, or is this just? I believe uh, so because we're going to refer this to the city council. We're going to recommend it to city recommend city council in this this change. Correct. Yep. Okay. So move. Second. Before we move to vote. Okay. On page seven, there are some changes I'd like to understand. Um, there's a seven slash five on some of the portfolios. One of them is a state and local agency investment fund. What does that mean? Oh, okay. Uh, and my apologies, I'll, I'll share my screen on that one too. It is in the staff report, uh, but I did not uh, actually talk about it. So. The maximum we are allowed to invest in in the local agency investment fund, that's the uh, LAIF where all governments basically park their money, uh, liquidity. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are allowed to park up to 100% of the portfolio, but the maximum was 65, uh, 65 million uh, uh, until last year. And then uh, the treasurer of the state of California raised that to 75 million. So we've just incorporated that change based on what was given. Uh, our investment portfolio is not that high, but uh, hopefully it can be one day. Um, is that fund guaranteed by the federal government? So yes, e every investment that they make is in uh, guaranteed uh, federal investments. Okay. So the other thing about our, that, that fund is that this is the most liquid fund. We can get money in a matter of a few days. That's the, that's the fastest cash we can get. Yeah, it's yeah. a 24 hour liquidity. So, so most, part of our investment policy is to keep that the money there percent. instead of uh, having it in a money market. Uh, sorry, Chair, you were saying something? Sorry, I was just saying that we have a policy of a certain um, a percentage that we can uh, leave in life of our cash, basically. So uh, any other objections, Commissioner Claris? Or No, that wasn't necessarily an objection. It was, I, I wanted to understand. Okay. What yeah, and I should have, it, it is in the staff report, but I should have talked about it. So we'll take a vote on that, Chair Coca. Yes. Vice Chair McClashy. Yes. Commissioner Claris. Yes. Commissioner Fry. Yes. Commissioner Kalbach. Yes. Commissioner Ripple. Ripple. Yes. Commissioner Richmond. Yes. That motion passes seven zero as well. Then moving to the next item uh, on the memorandum of internal controls. So we had uh, three items. I, we briefly touched upon this in our uh, act for presentation in the last meeting, but we had received it on the same day. So uh, we said we would bring it back. Uh, one of the issues raised by, by the auditors was timely invoice payments. Uh, we had uh, invoices that were delayed for seven to nine months, uh, vendors were not paid. Uh, part of the issue we discovered was that uh, once COVID hit, the, the procedures were changed for departments to actually send them to a certain folder and uh, they got lost in space uh, with all the turnover. But uh, since we've come on board, we've changed procedures, uh, we've cleared all of that and set new procedures where uh, a lot of departments are now actually doing their own invoices through the system. And uh, we also have processes where they would uh, send it to a certain area in AP. So we've had training with departments as well. So we don't foresee that be being a problem going forward. Uh, the second issue that they found was that we had outdated signature cards. So. Uh, you know, uh, last year there was a lot of turnover, uh, especially in the higher management. So uh, the signature cards for the union bank account were not changed, uh, which basically meant they had the old city manager and the old uh, finance uh, director's sing signature cards. 
However, that's just the custody account. Uh, Union Bank was the custodian for, uh, for our PFM portfolio. Uh, they were bought out by, Union, by a US Bank and uh, that account was closed when they moved all the investments. So it is irrelevant anyway. So there was no risk uh, of anything happening. But are, there was- Are you saying that there's no money in that account? It's just a debt account? Correct. It's a clo it's currently it's a closed account. Uh, there were like uh, probably four months when the ex city manager or the ex uh, administrative services director could have had signing authority. So all of so what you're saying is all the signature cards at the appropriate banks are current. That is correct. It was only this one that was not current, which uh, has closed the account itself has closed. But there was a four month uh, window where there was a risk that uh, something could have happened. But there was no activity in this bank account during that window. Yeah, it, it is more of a transit account. So let's say we wanted to liquidate some of the investments from the PFM portfolio, then the investments that we liquidate would come into this account before we decide to take it back to our checking account or any other place that we want to park it. So for the most part, there was no balance in it because we did not liquidate anything in the last two years from my investment portfolio. Okay, that's the next one that I think we have, a, we may need to have a little conversation about. Okay, and then uh, finally, the, the third point that they had was more in regards to uh, this, the phishing attacks and all, all the risks that uh, governments have faced in the recent times. They noticed that uh, uh, the city of Los Altos doesn't have an investment system risk management policy. Uh, they have made uh, recommendations that the city implement one. So we've had discussions with uh, with John uh, in risk management and the IT manager, and they have uh, said that they currently have controls where you know people can't get into our systems unless they have a VPN connection. So they need to have any any dedicated staff has VPN to get into any servers here. So they have controls in place, and they have said that they would uh, be implementing a policy in, in the, within the, before the next audit. Can we get an action item with a name and a deliverable so that we know that this occurs? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so I have a couple more questions about this. Uh, I don't know if uh, John, you can answer them or we need to get someone else. So first of all, I mean, the, uh, so if you don't mind, I mean, I'm going to ask a few uh, questions about, so this, we still are hosting our financial systems ourselves, right? That server lives on uh, in, the, in, in the office. Correct. The, the uh, which is kind of an antiquated is... way because, you know, we, there's no way we can actually protect it as much as uh, even, you know, AWS could protect it. So that sort of, but that's a, is that a, some sort of a requirement or is that just a legacy uh, implementation that we have not been able to sort of get past? I would say the, sec the second part is correct. It's a legacy system. You know, what they did was we had the system for, I believe a number of years, uh, over 15 years. And then uh, when they upgraded, they basically put Central Square on top of the current database. So everything resides here. Uh, yes, but yeah. they do have hosting, uh, they do have the option to host as well in the cloud. Right. So this, so it feels to me, I mean, I'd, I'd like to actually hear some other people's opinions that I think it is uh, asking too much for a little city to protect a server uh, with uh, sitting in our physically, literally physically sitting with all the data in our office versus uh, having it in a data center which is professionally managed uh, by somebody who can actually sort of do this. So there are two implications. One is, uh, you know, I think it'd be important to understand what it would take to actually uh, move it to the cloud and into a secure place. And two, 
what does it do to our, our, our I'm, I'm, I know we have some insurance against uh, phishing and stuff like that. What does it do to that liability? Does it go down uh, in terms of our cost for that? Uh, I would suspect it would. And, uh, and also just someone's analysis of, uh, of uh, you know, how much risk would we have, less or more risk would we have if we actually change that from self-hosting. Uh, so, so it kind of begins with just the fundamentals of the physical, and then of course having a policy and a program. So uh, now those people don't report to you as they did before the administrative services director. So, uh, do you know if they are working on this thing, and is there a separate commission that would be involved in it in terms of creating that policy, or how would that happen? Because we would like to have some input in it. So, as, as far as I know, uh, the they have in my conversations with them based on this audit finding they have they have said that they have a number of uh, of procedures in place to protect the servers but this is more in terms of having that documented right in, in terms of what would you do if there's an attack what how would how are you currently protecting your systems so all those yeah. things would have to come into a document. Drive like a maniac and unplug the machine. Can we That's get really copies cool. of these procedures so we can look at them? Because it, when I read this report, particularly this section, I was pretty horrified. Yep. Um, and not to have it, we supposedly have a risk manager. Why isn't he screaming at everybody that this is a serious risk? Um, do we do we have a risk manager or is it John? No, we have a risk manager. So I would say this is a fairly important thing, John. I think we've we've talked about this before, and we've been sort of you know gobstruck that uh, we are so in such an antiquated uh, space. And you've talked about how the system itself, but the physicality of it being hosted ourselves and, and us keeping, uh, you know, I'm sure somebody is patching that uh, the firewall gateway and that VPN uh, themselves and uh, making sure that uh, they stay current on that uh, is a horrendous task. I mean, that's yeah. not easy yeah. to, to keep up. You know, that's that thing should be being patched three times a week, you know. Well, it's it more than that. We have to get to the point where we actually can pass external audits for cyber. In right. our field, in aerospace, we have to pass the NIST. And yeah. there has to be a third party. There has to be a series of procedures for each and every one of these things. And somebody verifies them. Right. We don't we have, don't have, have, have the a requirement. But you know, my concern is that I think, uh, I mean, small towns like us are very susceptible to uh, to an attack where somebody keeps a data hostage and you know, wants Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. This, is not a, this is a fairly common occurrence now. I agree with you completely. I think hopefully they're going to tell us that they have a, a complete backup air gap someplace so that if they, if somebody stole everything, you could shut it down and restart it. I think it would be well worth it to to have a policy in place and to have a, 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 an IT firm kind of do intrusion testing to see how strong or robust our controls are. Uh, that is something certainly I have done in other cities, but. Uh, I can speak to John, who had, heads risk management, and see if that's uh, something he can get done. Yeah, I mean that's that uh, assumes that we are going to keep the server in house and uh, try to you know and and uh, and the VPN server and uh, understand how to uh, patch that gateway and keep it secure ourselves. I think the first prominent first discussion is that you know what is the recommendation of our IT. Uh, risk people as to is that a right thing to do or not, or if they feel why if they feel that we should keep it in house and why. Uh, I think this is a this is potentially a ticking time bomb, John. John, I think we need to yeah you know, sort of do something about it before it becomes a news item. I second that it's a ticking time bomb and that this needs to be a top priority for uh, the city. No procedures. Um, Nobody could explain it. Even when we were talking to the auditor, all she basically said is, oh, they use passwords. Yeah. And no like, two-factor identification yeah. or anything. I'll, I'll go back a couple of years if I can. And is this in, in in hardware? Is it in the basement of the police department that floods all the time? Or the trailer, <laughs> the trailer, the temporary trailer out in back that's not secure? 
I mean, honestly don't physically. know. <laughs> I think it's something we ought to find out. I can find honestly. out. Yeah. Maybe one of those library computers sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that may be better than being in the flooding police department. You yeah. Know? I mean, it feels like, okay, what does somebody want to do with our, our data? You know, it, it's worth a million dollars. Extract money out of it. Yeah. It's not worth a hundred million dollars, but it's worth somebody's effort to attack us. Right? Yeah. I mean, we would pay something to have yeah. our server released, right? You'd have to. If you want to make sure the data is secure, we want to make sure we don't lose it. We don't want to make sure an employee who's disgruntled destroys right. it. We right. have to have systems and we have to have procedures. Backup, That's why backup, my backup. original question was, who's responsible? What dates are, going to, are we going to see this procedure? Because this has to be almost a top priority. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I will raise those with the risk manager and update the commission at our next meeting. Uh, I think some of your fears uh, should be subsiding with the next presentation, but uh, are there any more comments on the- I, I, I'll make a comment as a guest uh, sitting in. Um, in some of my prior experiences, uh, the biggest risk is uh, ransomware. Uh, yeah. You'll come in, the servers are locked and you know uh, some entity says, I need, uh, we need 20 million in Bitcoin to uh, give you the key to unlock the server. That's your biggest risk. And uh, your uh, IT yeah. person should yeah. will probably come up with a strategy to restore everything from some backup offsite. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 John, let's just take an action item and, and uh, see if we can get someone to actually, um, even if it's a document they can send us, and then uh, and if it requires a further conversation. I mean, you're hearing it pretty clearly that uh, I think this is something that should be pretty, uh, pretty importantly taken care of, right? Maybe it is already is. We just like to know. Yeah, I will have I will have something at the next commission meeting. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, and then moving to the financial system update, uh, I'm going to share my screen for this one. Sorry. So all these Gatsby changes that are also in that same document before you go off this document. Uh... Correct. Uh, do you want to go over those? Well, I mean, not really, uh, but it's uh, are these. Uh, these are deficiencies in our system that we're not meeting, or are these new guys? No, these are new pronouncements that are applying in 22 onward. So, uh, like for example, GASB 87, it's it's dealing with how you would treat leases, and uh, there is a a new way that you have to have to do. There's no more operating leases. Okay. So, so every lease would have to be looked at, is it at fair market value? And then if it is at fair market value, you have to capitalize the present value of the lease payments. Uh, so it's a new procedure. It's a new accounting procedure that would apply. Okay. Okay. So that patent gets us past the GASB. And then there are two or three other things that have passed the GASB in the document. You know, some of them are about some basically like accrual of legal liabilities was kind of done incorrectly. Some prep journal entries were made too late. You so know, those that, were those were the 20, uh, 20 items. Uh, right. Those were the issues with the twenty twenty, and I can go to those uh, that area. So the, so the biggest one is the, is the, in that is that if you don't mind us uh, just talking about the the fact that. Uh, we had some liabilities that we are now posted to 2022, current fiscal year. Right. Uh, what does that mean in terms of our books or how we now? Uh, you're talking about the legal accrual of legal liabilities? Well, that's the only one that actually has an impact on the current fiscal year, right? Uh, so so this, this was the 2020. Uh, Post 2020. Okay. Right. So, so what happened in, in 2020 audit? Uh, you can put it on 2021. Yeah, so we actually booked them in 2021, but it was, it was, uh, so basically when, when, when you have an audit, the auditors will come in, look at your books, and then they'll ask you if you have any pending litigation, right? Uh, and if you have any, you would say, yeah, here's my pending litigation. But before they complete their audit, if you have a settlement that you've you're made or you've come to an agreement, then that's a known liability. So if it's a known liability that was started before the fiscal year ended, 
but paid after the physical year ended, you're supposed to accrue it back to the previous physical years because it's a known liability. Oh. This, this is a case that's ongoing, then all you tell the auditors is this case is ongoing and we don't know how much we have to pay. So that's... when this in 2020, when the, when the auditors had finished a, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the report, but before they could issue it, uh, there were two settlements that were agreed with 40 main and those payments went out of the 21 instead of being accrued back to 20. So uh, since they were known, they should have been in 20. Okay, so they, they impact our fiscal 2021. 20, Correct. Um, books, uh, because it's, you know, a million has a big swing on, on how we look at our, our year. <laughs> So, however, so. however, uh, chair, uh, chair Kirkett, the the million dollars that we paid went out of the operating reserve. They didn't go out of the out of the re revenues or expense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we, we lowered our, our our reserve for that. Correct. Okay. And that's why our reserve dropped below twenty percent. Okay. Uh, John, could I could you possibly? provide some feedback to the auditors. Um, this is the first audit I've ever seen that didn't have page numbers or logos or names on the audit. Um, and then the second question I have is, uh, I'll read you what it says in the audit report. We recommend that the city establish proper procedures to ensure segregation of duties to mitigate the potential risk of journal entries being altered without verification. And what their concern was, and again, I'd like to see an action item, a person assigned and a date when it will be completed. It says, during our testing of the journal entries, we noted that both financial services manager and administrative service director can prepare and post journal entries to the financial system directly. That's kind of scary. It appears that the financial system was set up to allow both staff to prepare and post journal entries. I'd like to hear what Art has to say about that particular line. Yeah, not ideal. Yeah, um, so uh, actually those two titles were one person. So before, uh, uh, the services director and financial director was one job, one person. Uh, but even uh, what it doesn't point out is that the finance manager um, also, I think uh, I think there was there were some and uh, some areas where there was only a finance manager could do completely you know, reverse an entry, etc., without any approval of the finance director. Uh, so some of that was a limitations of our financial system before uh, that it just didn't track uh, changes to journal entries. Uh, but now, John, I'm hoping that uh, they have to be approved by a second person before you can change a journal entry. Correct. So, so this was again, these are what you're reading, uh, 2020 findings. So in 21, these findings were not found. Uh, what they're referring in 2021 was that uh, 15 of, of the journal entries were posted after 45 days. However, we do have make a checker right now, uh, June, uh, I believe we cannot enter and post ourselves, correct? I, I believe that was something I looked at when I first arrived. Why, why would the auditor say that you can and it needs a procedure if that's correct? So that was in 2020, Commissioner. It's not a 2021. It's not a 2021 finding. These are the past findings. So the current year findings were the first three that we talked about. It would be nice if they clarified that. I'd like to see the auditors rewrite this report and clarify that statement. Right. And, and also and put page numbers and dates on this. And these, the page numbers and dates would come in the final report. This is still mm -hmm. a, in the draft form, uh, you know, after we finalize our responses and send to them, then it will be an official document. At this stage, it's still a draft. So, so what's prompting them to uh, bring back the 2020 uh, findings in the 20 in the in the again or 
they always refer to one year before, uh, to the items of one year before to check if they were okay. Yeah, it's it's yeah. okay. So they will always mention any, any MOIC will have your current year findings and then the previous year findings and if anything repeated or if the controls were in place. So, so John, I think this was a system issue that we just did not have a system that could allow us to have this kind of controls before. And hopefully now we have the system and we've implemented it in the way that we actually use the system, you know, to actually have the ability to. Correct. Uh, to, 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 me, uh, to me, as, as a finance person, this is the biggest risk you can have. If someone can enter and post something, that's the biggest risk you can have. Yeah. The number one risk is being able to post your own journals. The, the number two risk is if two people collide. But, but if they do, then you can't really help it, right? You, you don't know if two people get together. But yes, this is the number one risk. And I personally look uh, at, at least on a quarterly basis, I look at all the journals to make sure that they're not, uh, you know, who has entered and who has posted. At least make sure that it's not the same person. Uh, I am not a hundred percent sure if they can still do it. J uh, June, did you uh, check that? Or uh, yeah, it's only a uh, senior accountant level can key in the journal entry, and then only me can uh, uh, approve it. I won't be able to. You know, so if you enter your own journal, you can't post it, right? Right. Yeah, that's what I thought because because that that change would have been. If that was possible, they would have brought it up again. I believe that was a flaw in the workflow when they implemented last year. Do we have a workflow document which defines what uh, the city of Los Altos does for um, what I, systems are involved, who does what to whom, what outputs occur? I do not. I do not believe there is something like that. There might be something in IT because IT controls workflow. Uh, there was a uh, there was a document. Uh, I mean, um, referring back to now when they did the implementation of the new financial system, they did. Uh, this is like a year and a half. I'm doing from memory, or two, or maybe two years ago, that they did actually work on a workflow document that was presented to the commission. Uh, we did not obviously, you know, spend great detail because our biggest concern was uh, this fact that it was like a like system where anybody could go in and do any post any kind of entry and delete any entry and there'd be no history of it uh, so that was our big concern that was that was to get you know has been uh, prompted by the audits every year for uh, as long as i've been on the commission just five years so um, so there is definitely a workflow that was created about two years ago i think i don't know if john you can find it but uh, it was created when this new system was implemented yeah, It'd be I wonderful if the rest of us could see it. I think it would help us understand yeah, uh, more of the city processes and what we're actually trying to accomplish. I think at this point, the difficulty is um, we are, we lack the staff. So it is not like uh, we have all the staff in place to uh, implementing the workflow we are planned if it is. Uh, like me, I just had recently changed uh, because I have new hires. Um, teach him how to um, do certain tasks. I have to switch the workflow authorization, who can do what. Um, of, of course, I have to send an email to IT and I, IT will be able to change the workflow. So there is a limited uh, um, the implementing the policy at this point, if there is any, but it's just because we still lack of staff. One of the things that was brought out in the audit report um, was that senior people were leaving. Have we done any exit interviews to determine why these people are leaving and why we have so much turnover in finance? Commissioner, I would, uh, I would recommend you watch the council retreat. Uh, there was a, a big presentation by HR on exit interviews and why people were leaving and the ratio of at which, or, or the number of people that have left, it, it was really informative. Uh, I think everyone would benefit from look, looking at that. There were two parts, it was on part one. So the first day of the council retreat, uh, the HR manager had presented a pretty detailed uh, summary of uh, what's happening. Thank you.
That'd be worthwhile. We're not having any any anyone leave since you and uh, Gabriel came on, have we? We've had two two of our finance staff leave uh, since we since came on board, and both both were the oldest tenures. So in that council retreat, you'll also see Gabe talking about it. Uh, the oldest employee we have in finance is nine months. Mm. So, so we don't have history, right? So, so some of these things like you were saying was presented two, two years ago is really helpful because then I can go back and dig. But there isn't that one person who can say, okay, you know, this is what was done and that was done. So we, we spend a lot of time trying to dig and find stuff, uh, which is really time consuming. And then, you know, we lost uh, a senior accountant and accounting tech. We managed to get one accounting tech uh, we are looking to hire a second accounting tech uh, soon. So we get back to full staff uh, and we have a lot of things to get done as well. Okay, we're trying to look at that HR report, but uh, you know, this has been a, a pressing problem for a long time that we've had attrition in finance so that uh, uh, yeah, I think it's been across the board. Control. If you see that uh, report, you would see that uh, I believe in every department, uh, engineering department, a community development department has lost a lot of people. So uh, we have, I believe, quoting from what the HR manager presented, we got around 20 recruitments out there right now. And that's mm. not to say that we have 20 vacant positions. Uh, that's all that they've handled now. They have a lot more. John, John would you have the link of that um, retreat Yes, I can send it to the commission. I'll send Great. it. Thank you. That would be wonderful. Thank you. John, how many open recs in your area? Sorry, Commissioner, I didn't get that. How many open um, budgeted positions, open recs, do you have in your in your area? In finance? Yeah. yeah. In finance, we, we had two. Currently, we have one. Okay. Yeah, we just filled one last, uh, a couple of weeks ago. What is the headcount in finance? So we have a total of six, and then we've got two hourlies that do uh, part-time hours. They're not full benefited employees. So you have a six full-time employees? That's all of us, yeah. Correct, okay. June, including you, me, and four others, right? Uh, yeah, four. Authorized the position for full-time. Things uh, other than you and me, yeah. But there was a one that's still vacant, about two part times, yeah. Yeah, we we have one vacant, uh, and we have one who's on workers' call uh, right now. But she's still coming in and trying to help. She's uh, she's seriously hurt her back. So uh, I think last month we were down to three of us uh, handling the department. So. Literally, June and me were doing some of the basic stuff as well. Yeah, also, uh, COVID doesn't help because of, uh, I got like uh, two, two part time both sick um, last week, last two weeks. Yeah. Oh. So. Grim. So that's why I only left three of us. Hmm. Okay. So anything else on, on the audit report? Uh, this is just the audit findings. The audit report was in the last meeting, so. On the last page, they talk about uh, cross-training. Has that been accomplished? So cross-training for payroll duties was accomplished. Uh, however, the, pers the, the person who was cross-trained has left. <laughs> so we have to now <laughs> wait to get somebody on board, uh, have them settle in and then cross-train. There's not much you can do with six people, right? Well, you, you can have it, one other person uh, do it. When, how do you enter a payroll into ADP? Do you do it uh, electronically through the phone? Do you do it on, do you call? Do you do it on the computer? How, how is it done? June, you want to take that? Um, well, my computer was frozen. I didn't hear the full question. Or what, could, you, could you repeat the question, please? I'd be happy to. 
Uh, when you input payroll data to ADP, yeah. how is it done? Is it done on each individual smartphone? Is it done calling ADP or do you do it electronically on the computer? How, how, how does the city of Los Altos uh, input the uh, hours? Yeah, for all the uh, exempt employees, so we don't key in our time sheet because we only do the exceptional report unless it you know, means we take vacation, we, you know, we key in our vacation hours in there. Sure. For the uh, not uh, except the exempt employees, they are key in the, their time sheets is directly into the ADP system. And then like today and yesterday, um, actually always report, we, me and other uh, payroll accountant, which is she's on workers comp is review all the time she been submitted and approved by each supervisor before we give a go for ADP to run the preview. How are those approvals done? Are they do it done electronically or is it a paper system? What, what, what no, system? It's, in the, it's only in ADP. The okay. to log in and then to prove each of their staff's time sheet, yes. Okay. It's all electronic and it's hosted by ADP. Okay. Anything else on the mic? If not, I'll move to the last item, which, which is the financial system. And for this one, I'm gonna share my screen first. Sorry about that. So can, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It might get bigger if you remove the next slide from the view. We just do presentation. We're seeing, are you seeing, uh, we're, seeing, seeing the, we're seeing the presenter screen. Okay. So there you go. Better? There you go. Okay. So on a financial system, the, I'm just going to go through the, the current system or systems uh, that we have in the city. Uh, and, and what our observations are. So the first thing is it's too expensive to maintain. Uh, and we'll go to that slide. We're paying around 200,000 for all our Frankenstein systems. Uh, with the financial system, the annual maintenance that we pay for it uh, does not cover beyond basic support. So what I mean by beyond basic support is, let's say we're trying to enter a journal and uh, it, there is an error in, in that posting or something, it's not getting posted. Uh, we would call in, we would do a case to Central Square and then Central Square would say, uh, okay, here's the resolution. So what Central Square will do is they'll say, okay, here's the data or they'll refer us to the manual on what to do in such a case. But if we cannot resolve it, and we need some someone from tax support to come in, uh, we have to pay extra for that. So uh, that's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Uh, with regards to HR, HR and payroll, uh, we have dedicated staffing from both HR and payroll, we have one fully dedicated employee uh, doing uh, all the checks and uh, previews with ADP for every payroll. Uh, the same thing is also done by one person from HR. Uh, and then June has to spend almost 60% of her time on a payroll week reviewing all those entries. Uh, we've had tons of errors take place uh, where everything is correct. For ex uh, a simple example would be, uh, we had to have for certain bargaining groups, we had uh, leave payouts. So over a certain threshold, we have to pay them their leave every year. Uh, in the previews, everything was correct, but when they actually process payroll, it did not pay. So we had to go back and do retros on that. And then 
all these modules do not talk to each other. And the current system that we have cannot accomplish council direction without spending more money. What I mean is uh, it will be much more clear once you see the retreat where we talked about the, uh, the financial situation of the city. We talked about how we would be doing budgets going forward, uh, you know, how we would be allocating personnel to different uh, funds. And then many cities currently are replacing the software that we own. Uh, so what did we do? Uh, we had citywide demos of two financial systems, OpenGov, which is widely used, and Tyler Technologies, uh, specifically the Munis product. They have several other products. Uh, we did not request demos for Springbrook, which is by Excella, MIP and Kayenta, because these three systems are relatively old technology. Uh, they are in the process of trying to upgrade, but uh, it's still taking, going to be a while before they have something good. And then we, we've also seen Oracle and SAP, which are huge. Uh, they are mostly used by bigger cities, San Jose, uh, you know, Oakland and that kind of size of cities and most of the counties, very expensive to maintain. Uh, Oracle was implemented or is being implemented by Sunnyvale and they're paying $7 million for that implementation. Yeah. And then we also did a, a, a look at pricing of the most recent implementation or uh, one of the neighboring cities. So Melrose Park actually chose OpenGov uh, for their uh, new software. Uh, OpenGov is great on the budget side and they're very robust in uh, their website and stuff like that. Uh, they are strong in, in a lot of features, but on the core financial side uh, and payroll side, they have purchased a different system that they are working on getting uh, integrated with their other software. So Mellow Park is basically going to be the guinea pig for them. Uh, they've got a good pricing on that. We are not recommending really doing it that way. Uh, and then if you see Tyler was a close second there with them and Central Square actually with the older technology was a more expensive system to implement. And the three below that are basically systems that are in the end, end of life phase, they need enough, a complete facelift before they should even be marketed. So John, on this slide, could you go back to the previous slide, please? Um, who put those numbers together and what's the backup for them? So this is the Mello Park uh, staff report. Okay. Uh, it's pretty detailed. I can, I, it's available on their website or I can share the staff report as well. So we pulled this from the most recent we could find uh, of a new implementation. And we looked at their staff report and how they came up with this analysis. It, the analysis looks correct. Uh, what, I can what, what do they mean by negative cost of ownership for OpenGov? So the, I, I'm not exactly sure how they did that. Or, or what was the basis of the negative cost of, I was looking more in terms of the total software cost over a five year period, mm -hmm. uh, w which was the core to my, to my takeaway. So OpenGov, we know is a, is a VC backed uh, new company, right? It's a, got gobs of money from um, Andreessen and all these company and, and the big companies. What is Tyler Muniz? I've never heard of them before. Uh, Tyler Muniz, uh, and we'll, we'll get to that. So OpenGov has been pretty popular on the front end side, you know, on the web design side, uh, sharing uh, information with public and stuff. A lot of cities you used it on the front end side, and then they had a good budgeting module as well. So it was primarily used for publishing to the public and for budgeting. Uh, but they did not have a strong, uh, or they did not have any anything on the financial side. Uh, they have bought something now that they are going to piece together. 
So it's probably going to be a good product uh, in, at the end of the day because uh, the technology is pretty good, but it will take a while before they'll be stable. <coughs> Right, so on our analysis, uh, we looked at Tyler Technology and Munis, and we thought this was the best option for us. Uh, why? Uh, one thing is the price that we are able to negotiate, uh, it being very reliable. Uh, there are over 150 clients in California, 2,000 plus nationwide. Uh, all the California reporting comes out of the box. So your uh, annual uh, SCO reports, your EDD, that's the employment department reports, uh, your form 941, 941 taxes, everything comes out of the box. Uh, the system's fully integrated, uh, the financials, payroll, budget and reporting. Four in five cities that currently are replacing their ERP are going with Tyler. Uh, the other big thing is that uh, the pricing is known for the next 10 to 15 years. They have a lock-in five-year price and then you can negotiate a certain, a 5% total uh, increase in the next 10 years. And unless they get bought by somebody, which happens in this, roll-ups happen in this space so much. So they would have to then honor that uh, contract because it would be in the contract itself. And then uh, council also set aside ARPA money, 350,000 for a new ERP in uh, the December 14th meeting. And one of the reasons why we are looking at Tyler, you can see the graph here, uh, and this is all Bay Area cities. Uh, if you look at the Bay Area cities, 37 of them use Tyler. So that's almost 43% of all cities in the Bay Area use Tyler technologies. And a lot of these are recent implementations in the last uh, th three to five years or so, because they bought a lot of the other competition. Uh, uh, so, so they have become the leaders in government right now. And then Looking at the recent implementations, I think this is really interesting. Uh, like the city of Fresno re replaced Oracle with Tyler. Uh, city of San Juan uh, replaced Harris with his Kayenta uh, with Tyler. And then the number of cities there that have replaced Central Square, and that's in just the last year. Uh, and then some of them have replaced uh, Springbrook as well. So going back to our analysis, the way we looked at this, uh, this is the current price code that we got from Tyler for going with the system. This is again, going to be a fully hosted system. Uh, everything will be in the cloud. We, we will not have uh, any servers here. Uh, we are looking at a total five-year cost of 822,000 versus our current system costing us over a million dollars. Uh, and th that's the analysis. We did see this at, or part of this in our last meeting with or a few meetings back with the commission. And then what are the next steps? Uh, do we go out and do an RFP? Uh, we have decided that we will not be doing an RFP. Uh, we wanna use cooperative purchasing. Uh, we are a member of, so of SourceWell, so we can piggyback on, on another contract from another, day, uh, from another agency. Uh, the current purchasing policy also allows us to do corporate purchasing. And if we go that route, we are going to get a 5 to 15% discount. And part of the reasoning being that we feel this is the best system in the market right now. So going out for an RFP is just going to delay the number of, and, and we would probably end up at the same result. So with that, that concludes this presentation. Uh, I would like to see what the commission has to say or if you have any feedback on, on this. So John, how involved is, uh, was Gabe in the conclusion or analysis? 
uh, Gabe is uh, very involved. Uh, I believe uh, he's, he is, I'm, I'm basically operating based on his direction. He wants to move, uh, move ahead as quickly as possible uh, because of the issues that we are currently facing. Uh, yeah. we, so I don't see him on this call tonight. Is he? I, yeah. Okay. So, so John, I think it seems like I mean, if there, this is a place, maybe the some members of the commission here could add value to your thought and evaluation process. It feels like I think uh, John and Art. I'm not sure who else. Uh, actually, I mean, I spent seven years building accounting systems of my life. Uh, I've implemented two Oracle financials uh, rollouts. Uh, I'm not questioning that dialer is the right thing, but I think if you are shorthanded and need some help, we could spin up a little subcommittee to help you with a couple of, you know, just a couple of uh, deep dives, you know, just a, a couple of meetings will do it to be able to make sure you've got everything covered, you know, and there are so many angles to this thing. Um, from you know the company and their approach to integration of their systems, etc. It's a big step. It's a big multi-year commitment. You know, it's not just about the financials and the annual payment, but it's a it's a it's a long-term bet to uh, that we want to make sure we get right. So that would be my offer. If you think you need the help, I think uh, I see some uh, commissioners. I think who could uh, set up a subcommittee could help you. What do you think? I, I, I certainly about? would consider that. Uh, I would need all the help we can get, even though we don't expect expect it to be too hard of an implementation. Yes, it's going to it's going to eat into our resources in terms of time and stuff, but I think this is the quickest way to get us into a position where we can accomplish what we need in terms of quarterly reporting, in terms of having data in one place, uh, in terms of having more robust controls uh, within yeah. the system. John, yeah. does Tyler replace ADP? Correct, it will replace all pieces. We'll, we, we will not be using ADP, we'll be processing payroll through Tyler. And there's a bunch of questions like that that we need to answer, right? Maybe we don't even need to do payroll ourselves. You know, there are all these outsourced HR companies that are much more effective and much more cost, you know, like for 50 bucks per person, you can do payroll through Trinet, you know? Uh, there's so many questions like this that I think a deep dive for, for a couple of hours would, would maybe- Right, so, so I, think, I think, you know, going back to, to the role of the commission, I think, uh, Operations should basically be is under the preview of the city manager, and you know, yes, we would appreciate the help, but you know how we would like to operate on a day-to-day -day basis, or what systems we need to operate. I think that's more of a city manager issue or, or direction compared to the commission. So, uh, hence, it was a, an offer. You know, I'm not right, right, right. And, and we appreciate that. We so you could actually use a couple of people on this commission. Yes. For two two hour meetings, you know, and if, if you think you need the help, I think we we could uh, help you. Yeah, we certainly would appreciate that. Uh, we can use all the help we can get. So can I uh, add on to Kuljeet, where Kuljeet started? Uh, three, four years ago, Martha and Kuljeet will probably remember, we were told that our current system was the latest, greatest, da da da. <laughs> and uh, here we are. So. I also have no doubt that your process has been good and that you're more than capable to see what what we really need as a city. And Gabe, likewise, is, I'm sure he's involved. I mean, this is his forte too. But I, I think it would just be, frankly, politically smart <laughs> to to have some others just kind of look over your shoulder in looking at the decision and how you're going to do it, not on an ongoing basis. I mean, this is a, you know, if I, if I were on the city council, I'd say, wait a minute, we've been here before. And it would be just good for our, our uh, peace of mind and yours to say, yeah, we had, we had it reviewed by the, so 
I also am not trying to second guess, and I'm not the guy that would be on the subcommittee, but I, I think it would be smart for you to use what help you can for a review. I may uh, make a comment. Um, <clears throat> here I am guests making two comments, it's just viewing the meeting, but. Or well, it's uh, kind of not protocol, but uh, yeah. if you don't mind, if, uh, I'd ask you for your comment in a second, Jim. Just okay. one second, let the, let the commissioner speak first. Oh yeah, sure. Thank you. John, uh, I, I just, I've never heard of Tyler, so could you send us links? Oh, so sure. that we can just see, is it a big company, a small company? Um, you know, how much payroll do they handle? I think these. I think Tyler is also another roll up. You know, they bought a bunch of small companies. Yeah, they they are pretty. They, they are one of the largest uh, companies in government accounting. They are the largest at the moment. I I will share you data. Uh, Gabe has has had the opportunity to to use them in his past series. I have used them in one of my past series. Uh, June, have you had experience with Tyler? Yes, I was in the implementation for city of um, uh, Albany. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It, in comparison, since since I have used both, I can tell you it's uh, it's a hundred times better than what we have. <laughs> um, may I ask a question? If uh, once you implement a new accounting system, which deja vu, will you then also have to buy a report writer like an open gov type of a product so that you can issue reports because we years ago felt that the reports that were being issued out of the current system weren't weren't good enough or or were not adequate for um the people of the city to read so where 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 are we going to go after we get the accounting system implemented are we going to have to buy something in addition to that so the current the, the system that we are looking at uh, has got built-in reports, uh, all all the main reports that you need are built in, but it also has two report writers uh, inclu included in the price. So you have uh, what's known as SSRS. So that's Microsoft Report Writing. Uh, you can write reports in Microsoft. Uh, they are not for the for the faint-hearted. You you need a little of little bit of SQL experience in doing it. I have done a few of those, but I'm not that advanced. But the beauty is that is that they've got something that's known as cube reports. So uh, they have views that are created at night, uh, and then you can pull that data into Excel worksheets like pivot tables and create reports. So budget to actuals, uh, you know, payroll reports, any kind of re module that you have, you can pull all reports on the fly. And all that is included in the current price that we are talking about. So, uh, John, this is Art, uh, Art Whipple. And uh, I, I think that I don't believe what Coljeet was offering was more oversight I think he was offering in certain, I've done half a dozen uh, implementations over the last 10 years. So I, uh, I know the ownership issue, you're gonna own this. Correct. And, uh, and so we're gonna expect this to work. Uh, and so I think the smart thing for you to do is to be as, as uh, uh, knowledgeable as you can be about what are some of the, the pitfalls that you might have with uh, doing these sorts of implementations. And they may not have anything to do with, uh, they may be HR issues, not, uh, not accounting. So uh, I, I think what I would suggest is we're a resource. You know, we don't have to be oversight. We can be, we can give you thoughts about how to do this and, and be successful because we clearly want you to be successful. So yeah, we appreciate that. Yeah. And Art and I both had full heads of hair before we did <laughs> implementation. I'm, I'm looking down the row. I don't see too many heads of hair. Martha's got the, you know. <laughs> to to, to yeah. me, the, the simplest thing would be to maintain the status quo. But 
it is not going to help us in the long run. Yeah, we're with you. We're with you. We don't. I think uh, maintaining the status quo is, is would be a mistake. Not an option. But yeah. also, you know, biting off more than we can sort of chew. I mean, we we lost seven people uh, during the last uh, trans transfer of, of uh, from one system to the other. You know, it was a pretty precarious thing for a city to go through. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way, but uh, also we want to make sure we're not we're not doing an oh shit again in, in two years. But, but you know, uh, you you are in better hands this time. I I have been through three implementations, uh, two implementations in in the governmental sector and three in the private sector. Uh, June has been through a couple of implementations as well. So uh, we know what we are doing we we understand the whole process uh, we are confident that we can implement this well and implement it properly uh, we are not saying this is the latest and greatest like you had you were told before i'm showing you real data i'm showing you what other cities are doing what other cities are using uh, you know when you ask the the auditors last uh, in our last meeting have you have you ever audited a company or, or, or a city with this system, they said, this is the only one, right? So, so that you ask them about Tyler, they'll say that five out of four out of five cities that they audit have Tyler. I'd like to ask uh, Mark and John from the commission to also comment a little bit, please. Well, I've done, you know, a couple larger implementations as well. And, um, you know, I I I, th I think I'm as frustrated as everybody because the last administration presented that um, you know they had they had a great system. They 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 were just months away from you know full integration, um, and now you know we don't quite know what happened. Um, and uh, um, I just want to make sure that whoever we're dealing with. And I don't know government accounting. I know SAP and, and Oracle. So I just want to know whoever we're dealing with is the uh, the gold standard. Certainly, and I'll, I'll be sending out that uh, the link to their website. And, uh, you know, I would also have you, you know, if you do your own research, you would come to the same conclusion, I'm hopeful. Okay. Okay, so offer still stands. Uh, if you need to create a subcommittee for it, then we can do that now. Or if you want to think about it and, and wait, I don't know. I don't know what your timeline is, John. I, I think we we are yet to make that decision whether we are going to go out with an RFP or we are going to piggy bank. So as soon as the city manager gives me some direction on that, uh, you know, by the time we get into the next meeting, we would, we should have a clearer picture. Okay. If you're not going to have a subcommittee, then I think I will ask my commissioners to actually think about some of the questions, and then we can ask more questions. I mean, you did the presentation this time, but uh, we were, you know, under the assumption that you've you've gone through the sector checklist of security issues, you've gone through checklist of protocols or processes or uh, integrations and data transfer, and you know uh, all the implementation issues that uh, possibly could. Uh, but I think I would then want the commission to have an opportunity to at least ask those questions uh, to make sure that uh, you've been uh, very thorough in your thinking of our, because we, we don't want to do this every couple of years. Do, do we, waste do of time, we, waste of energy. Yeah, just yeah. do we have, do we want a demo of the system? Do we want one of the, the vendor to come online and just run us through the top 10 things that you do um, so, that you can run the system with six people that you don't need to hire six more people to run yeah. the system? That should be we actually had a citywide demo, uh, a whole day's demo. I believe that was recorded. Uh, we can share that with the commission as well. June, did they send us the link to the recording yet? If not, I can. I'll arrange that. I think you haven't. No. Yeah, there was a comprehensive uh, presentation by them. Uh, we it was recorded. They and a lot of the city departments. So we had everyone on board. We wanted this to be an inclusive thing. We had HR on board, we had engineering on board, community development, recreation, everybody was in there. And there were different modules that were presented. PD was there as well. And there was a lot of back and forth questions. Can you do this? Can you do that? 
and they also showed how they do things on the system. So I think that would be also helpful. Thank you, thank you, Commissioner Vice Chair, for bringing that up. That's that would be really helpful to the commission. Yeah, I mean, it's a full-blown ERP system, so it has a massive impact on the on the city and uh, on everything. You know, I mean, people are just going from writing handwritten uh, papers and emails for notifications to to just using the current system. So this is, a, you know, I mean, we don't want it to be disruptive. Right, I don't, I don't want to do budget and CIP on Excel worksheets that change every meeting. <laughs> right, amen to that. Uh, and payroll, so Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> Same problem. Okay, um, I think the offer stands. You see that uh, we do have some expertise and, and, and uh, so let us know, John, uh, but we do want uh, you to make sure that if before you make the final decision, when you come back, uh, even if we don't have a subcommittee that we do want to be able to ask you a bunch of questions, uh, particularly about implementation methodology and process. And security of whiskey, another issue that's kind of paramount. Okay. John, our, our, our guest, would you like to comment please? Oh. Jim, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Uh, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, I no spent, uh, much like you, Kulji, I spent some years selling to governments and uh, probably uh, more than I, I, I mean, it was always uh, an interesting scenario, but long story short, I think art covered most of what I was gonna offer. I would only say to John, uh, what I found is if the commission, I'm just saying this independent person, not a member or anything else, public, maybe member of the public of the community, the commission is willing to go do uh, all the uh, background the diligence with the various other cities. Now you got a great advantage because it's, Tyler, and I do know Tyler because they looked at acquiring a company I worked with at one time. Uh, they're in East Texas and uh, they they are a roll up just as Kuljeet said, uh, they acquired a lot of companies over the years. Uh, but with so many California cities, you do have some some influence, right? You just wanna see so with the city who has had them for years, two years, do the same thing all over again. And if not, what would they do differently? And I just think you're gonna get a ton of insights, especially if you get your commission to help on that. Thank that you. was it. Thanks for coming. That was it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next topic then. So the next one is just going to be staff announcements. As I said, uh, you know, we had uh, a full day uh, last week. On on Tuesday, we had uh, we had five presentations from the from finance side to council. Uh, we presented the financials, which the commission had seen earlier. Uh, we also presented the budget philosophy and how we intend to do budget going forward. Uh, we presented the OPEB, uh, OPEB reserves and the, and we also presented the CalPERS pre-funding which, which this commission has already seen. And uh, what was also interesting was we presented our fleet management uh, or our fleet where our fleet stands as of today. Uh, we, we are looking at uh, a fleet of 84, I believe, with uh, probably 15% of that being over 30, 20 to 30 years old. Uh, youngest generator is 24 years old uh, with a life of 20. So we kind of presented where we are looking at probably a $3 million replacement value of the current equipment that is required in the next year or two. So uh, I think it would be extremely beneficial to the commission to look at the, the recordings for both those days, at least the first day. And then I also spoke to Jim with engineering and I believe this commission had requested a report on the community center project. Uh, yeah. He was supposed to do it uh, in this meeting, but then he had surgery on his arm. So he requested that it be pushed to February. So he will be presenting at our next meeting. Okay, that'd be great, thank you. So was there a question of, uh, I mean, our fleet, uh, sort of a different thought about our, our different direction in our fleet in terms of uh, not yet this was just you know a lot of the retreat was uh, was different this time it was more in terms of uh, 
bringing to light uh, everything that Gabe as the new city manager, me as the new direct finance director has seen and, and how things are and how we want them to be kind of more, more like an overview. And then once council gave, gave us that direction at the retreat that, okay, we would like to see this, then we're gonna work back and bring a lot of those either with the budget or separately. Okay. Super. Okay. Anything else about um, your 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 one one your one person short? You think you'll fill that shortly or? Yes. Yeah, so so we had uh, we we've, we've got an opening for a senior accountant and an accounting tech. So when we went out and interviewed for the accounting tech, uh, we got a very strong candidate. Uh, from another city with six years experience. So we hired that person immediately. And then from the secondary group, uh, we saw a couple of uh, candidates who, who can be really good. Uh, they have the aptitude to learn. So uh, the market is really tight now. So we decided that we are just going to go and hire another accounting tech instead of a senior accountant and then give this current group the opportunity to grow into that role. One of them would, would then see, because part of the issue why we are losing staff is we've got all these entry level positions, right? So they get a couple of years experience and they go. Mm. If there is that opportunity to grow, uh, and I'm also talking to HR in terms of the structure, maybe you know, we need to have, we have the accounting text and then we directly have a senior accountant. Maybe we need to have an accountant as well. So then you can have flexible, you have that flexibility to move people around the accounting tech, see that they have some opportunity to grow uh, yeah. other than leaving. So, and then part of, we, we lost one of the staff we lost, uh, we lost to our old finance manager, Tweet, uh, uh, who was with the county actually took Josh to the county. Oh, she did. Yeah. Oh. And how are you selling in June? I'm good. Yeah, I'm actually I'm really happy being here. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I, I do believe uh, the leadership of Gabe and John. I do. Yes. As you know, I actually compete with John for the director's position. But um, after I talked to John, and then uh, you know we worked things out, and then uh, I do have a faith in John to um, bring the better financial pictures to the city. Yes, that's why I'm here. Great, great. We're very happy you're here. Thank you. Nice. Yep. Okay. Is that it? Eddie, uh, before we actually uh, wrap up, uh, is there any other items uh, that, the co that the commission would like to see uh, in the future or going forward? You know, what we haven't done with you is, is review our work plan. I mean, we had uh, kind of, you know, tried to build our work plan with some dates on it. Uh, since uh, I don't know if you have the history with us on that, that uh, so that we were kind of uh, trying to time um, the agenda topics to match with the sort of financial events in the year. Uh, if you like, uh, you and I can do that offline and uh, bring it back for next time so that uh, people get an update on the work plan. Okay, we can. Anything else from anybody? No, nope, not for me. Okay. My only comment is it'd be nice to get the data a day or two early. There's There was quite a bit to read and it would be wonderful if we could get it maybe by Wednesday. I, we yeah. got it on Thursday, I believe, right? We got it on f January 20th. So, but it's just, everybody gets so much mail. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think, uh, we are obligated to do it on Friday, but I, I did it one day early on Thursday. Uh, we will try to do our best, but then, you know, with the council retreat, we had five presentations for that. So preparing for that was also a challenge. Did anything come out of the council retreat in terms of the, you presented the, the budget and all that, right? I think it was it was really good. Uh, I don't want to steal the thunder. As I said, you know, if you go back and I'll I'll send the links right after this yeah. meeting. It's it's a really good watch. Good, yeah. worthwhile. Okay. 
Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Kaji. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye.